Welcome to Tag Tech, a series of short educational videos designed to help you get the most out of your Troutman colors. Today we're going to be working with three different shades of Red Elvis, Light, Medium, and Dark. The Dark is also called Black Elvis, and each has their own best use. A unique property, although they're all variations on the same color. Try and get a neutral to slightly oxidizing flame. You want to have more oxygen in the flame rather than less. And if you are uncertain, add more oxygen. It's better to have a more oxygenated flame than a more reducing flame. One of the ways of Determining whether your flame is oxidizing or reducing is looking at the candles that are close to the torch head. And if you see a lot of light colored, uh, bright candle flame, uh, that's more of an indication of a uh, reducing flame. And the sound of the torch as well, uh, uh, an oxidizing flame tends to be more of a hissing sound, uh, whereas a uh, reducing flame is a more bushy, softer flame. A traditional problem with the copper rubies is that if you're not careful, the colors can turn what we call livery, brownish, brickish. When you overheat the glass and get it too hot for too long, that's when you run the risk of growing the metallic crystals to the point where they start turning brownish. When you do get some liver, you can get rid of it by coming in with a very hot oxidizing flame and burning off the haze on the surface. I prefer to use a, a mini torch because you can get in and be very surgically precise about exactly where you're projecting the flame. Red Elvis is dear to my heart. It was the first color that I discovered how to make it self-striking. Since it strikes so easily, you end up with a much cleaner ruby because you don't have to spend so much time striking it. And so there's much less chance of overstriking it and turning it brownish or livery. The Light Elvis is designed to be used in pieces where you want a very light but brilliant ruby glass and you want to control the striking very carefully. It's important to note that the lightest versions of Red Elvis need to be struck in the kiln to get its full color. On the other hand, the Dark Elvis is designed to be used in very, very thin applications, either as a stringer or you can blow a bubble out into a very thin wall and it'll still be red. One of the other nice things about the Dark Red Elvis is that you can use it as a reddish brown or even a black when it's in a thick application. Generally speaking, I prefer to strike in the kiln because you can very, very precisely control the temperature and the strike uh, as precisely as possible. I can turn the kiln up to the striking temperature and monitor it and look every 15, 20 minutes to see if the color's where I want it. However, there's a lot of striking that happens in the flame, uh, especially in complex pieces where you're working on one section, then you work on another, and then you come back and work on it again. So it's pretty hard to avoid doing some flame striking. When you're flame striking Elvis, essentially what you want to do is mimic as much as possible what's happening in a kiln. And the best way to do that is to do it in a part of the flame that is less reactive. So that means as far away from the torch head as you can get. And uh, you try and do it slowly. You have to exercise some patience. If you get in a hurry, you're going to overheat it. Uh, if it's really a concern, uh, I would recommend using the lighter versions of the Elvis, then less flame striking is going to happen. 
and you can get it into the kiln and do most of your striking there. Thanks for visiting my color lab. Happy glass blowing.